Hi everyone, it's been a long time. Um, I'm, I hope you guys are having a great day. And enjoying the weather wherever you are. Um, today, this video is twofold. Um, one reason I'm making this video is to wish you is to wish you a very Merry Christmas and a Happy Holiday and have fun and be safe. And I know the holiday season brings different emotions for different people and I just want to say if this brings this time of year brings a wonderful feeling for you that's wonderful I hope you enjoy your family or your friends or whatever whatever you're doing and I pray God's blessing on you for the new year and if this holiday brings a sense of stress and am I going to get anything everything done I pray that God will give you strategies to get everything done and maybe um, he will give you strategies to cut back for next year or to uh, trim your holiday stress for next year because sometimes I believe we take on too much for no reason and I think that's a lot of the time why we're stressed because we're buying gifts and gifts and gifts for people that we don't even see or like the rest of the year. Um, so I pray that he gives you strategies to handle that. And there are other people who the holidays are a really sad time for them um, because they've either lost someone or something tragic has happened or they don't have family or friends to um, to go by or, or to fellowship with. And I pray for those people that the peace of God will find them and comfort them and hug them uh, where their greatest need is. And I pray that Lord, uh, this year, uh, 2018 will be the last year of loneliness for them. I pray that they will walk in your favor and walk in your strength and walk in your peace and walk in your love, God. I pray that you will just overshadow them with your grace and show them in little ways and big ways and any way you deem fit how, how much they are loved. Um, and for those who have lost loved ones, ones this year, I pray the peace of God will find you and comfort you and give you a seat at his table to replace the one at your empty table this year. I pray that they won't dwell on the sadness or emptiness that they will dwell on the good memories that they had with that particular loved one. And if that loved one is with you, I pray that you'll comfort their heart and show them um, that you have their loved one in your hands. And with you is the best place that they can be. Um, bringing restoration to families this season if there needs to be that restoration bring an overdose of love God bring an overdose of peace bring an overdose of joy lift every head God lift every heart in the name of Jesus Amen my second reason for this video is to share a word that God has been stir stirring in me probably for about two weeks now um, and he, he has been confirming it over and over and over. And um, I'm calling this sermon, 
your last last cry um let me let me pray first before i get into the song that i picked and the actual sermon father i pray that you use my lips to just minister your word in a powerful way you know what's been stirring in me you know what i've been what challenges I've been facing, God, and I pray that you will just hide me behind the cross. Let it be none of me, but all of you, God. And I pray that people won't see me through this sermon, Lord God. And I pray that they'll um, be closer to you, Lord Jesus, by the end of this. I declare, Lord Jesus, that, that this year, the end of 2018, will be their last last cry and God I pray that you will just uphold me as I bring your word let your word come forth with power and precision God let me say exactly what you want me to say Lord Jesus if I happen to have any unknown agenda in this Lord Jesus cast it down Lord Jesus let it be all of you all for your glory and none of me. I'm just the vessel. Use me, Lord. Pour into me and pour into my life, Lord Jesus. Um, as I speak your word, God. And bless all your servants out there, all the pastors and all the leaders that will hear the ser sermon either now or eventually, God. I pray that you will just speak through me to them, oh God, in the name of Jesus. All the mothers that are single or married and fathers of their Lord God, just comfort them, oh God. Bring families back together this holiday season, God. This can be a really divisive time for families, God. And you know what each family is going through, Lord Jesus. Sit with us, God. Sit with us at our dinner tables, Lord Jesus. Cause the stress of the season to be null and void, oh God. Replace this season's stress with your joy, oh God. Lord Jesus, let your whole being abide with us, God. We don't want you just on Sundays. We want you every day. We want you Christmas Day. We want you Easter and every day of the year. Cause us to walk by your spirit and not by our sight, oh God. I pray, Lord God, that you'll give us, grant us spiritual understanding. God, grant us wisdom for 2019 and what you have uh, for us, God. I pray that you will just break the back of the enemy for our sake oh god teach us lord god how you would have us participate oh god and i praise you and will give you all the praise and all the glory and we'll be careful to give you all the honor and all the glory for this sermon in the name of jesus amen hi guys in typical rachel fashion um for this sermon, I'm going to sing a cappella, Brian McKnight's One Last Cry, and then we'll get into the uh, message for today. Forgive me as I, as I position myself in front of the computer. You'll see my head and only my head for a moment. Oh, didn't want to do that. Okay, for this sermon, I'm going to sing Brian McKnight's One Last Cry.
this was his first single and this song helped me get through um, a really tough time um, when I didn't know where I was going I had left a church that I loved and I was um, really really unsure of where I was going and um, this song really comforted me although it's not a Christian song it's about a relationship that is broken and um, and I'm gonna sing it for you now Here's Brad McKnight's One Last Cry. My shattered dreams and broken heart I'm ending on the shelf I saw you holding hands Standing close to someone else Now I sit all alone Wishing all my feelings was gone. I gave, I, I, I gave my best to you. Nothing for me to do. But I have one last cry, one last cry. Before I leave it all behind. I've got to put you out of my mind. This time, stop living a lie. I'm get, I guess I'm down to my last cry. I was here, you were there. Guess we never could agree. Well, the sun shines on you. I need some love to rain on me. Here I sit all alone, wishing all my feeling was gone. Gotta get over you. Nothing for me to do, but I have one last cry. One last cry before I leave it all behind. I've got to put you out of my mind. This time, stop living a lie. I know I gotta be strong. Well, cause, oh, cause around me, life goes on and on and on. Life goes on One last cry Before I leave it all behind I've got to put you out of my mind This time Stop living a lie I'm gonna dry my eyes Right after I get my one last cry, one last cry Before I leave it all behind I'm gonna put you out of my mind This time, stop living a lie I guess I'm down I guess I'm down I guess I'm down to my last cry. Okay, so that's the song. Forgive the voice. Um, uh, this song is about uh, brokenness and a broken relationship. Now, I don't want to talk about broken uh, human relationships like man-woman relationships. But I do want to talk about um, 
the brokenness we have within ourselves. Um, some of us are crying year after year about the same things. And as, as we approach 2019, um, I think I can sense that he wants it to, he wants us to have a brand new year. And I don't know if this happens to anyone else, but when I start off a new year, I usually start off really, really, really well. I'm like, okay, this is going to be the year of what, whatever. And then I'm, I'm okay for the first few weeks or maybe the first month. And then I get kind of lackadaisical and start slipping back into my old patterns, old patterns and start doing my old things until the end of the of the year and then I say okay this is gonna start a new year new beginning um and the Lord told me to tell people out there to break the cycle and if you want this year to be different than all the other years and to have your last last cry because because um, um, I've said, okay, I'm not going to be dealing with this for another year. I'm not going to be having this issue for another year. But then the, uh, the year rolls around and I'm still dealing with it. And I said, God, how do we stop uh, dealing with these cycles, these cyclic reciprocal issues that um, that we just keep going on around and around and he said to me he said um, he said you've got to participate with me in your own healing uh, we have the misconception that God is just going to do all the work he's going to take away that sin he's going to get rid of that propensity he's going to just make you stop doing it one day and he says no if you want to get healed if you want to get delivered you have got to participate with me you have got to sit you have got to participate he said this is a relationship we always say christianity is not a relate uh, not a religion, but it's a re relationship. So in any working relationship, there there is no one person just doing everything and the other person is receiving. We are, God is called to do and we are called to receive. But most of the time, we are also called to do and God is also called to receive but we miss that second part so we open our hands to receive without doing anything we're like oh God take away this sin take away this thing I don't want it anymore and he's saying I will take it away, but I need you to participate. So, real deliverance. He said deliverance in this season will not be miracles like we usually think of miracles. We usually think of miracles as in uh, God just does it and that's, and we don't have to do anything. There is that type of miracle, but there's also this type of miracle in this season where he wants us to participate as well. And I think if we, if we do participate, we'll see an unprecedented growth in our spiritual lives, in our financial lives, in our relational lives. Um, with our children, if we have children, with our parents, if we 
have parents, if our parents are still living. He's just waiting for us to participate. Um, um, we often say we're waiting on God to do something. We're sowing because God will do something. We're, we're just waiting for him to do something. He's saying, in order for you to have your last, last cry, or in order for you to have what you've been praying for, what you've been waiting for, you've got to participate. You've got to get up off of your blessed assurance and join with God, partner with God and say, God, okay, I want this. What do I need to do to help f facilitate it? And sometimes he'll say, I don't need you to do anything. And sometimes he'll say, I need you to just trust me and let me work stuff out. And sometimes he'll say, I need you to do this. I need you to call this person. I need you to like do something. Um, and whatever he tells you to do, whether it be do nothing or participate in this way, do it. Um, divine obedience is going to be really key for miracles in this season. We want, uh, like I said before, we want miracles where we don't have to do anything and participate. And I know I said a minute ago that is sometimes what he wants us to do and that is still true. But also what he wants us to do is um, partner with him to understand what it actually is that he is doing. And, and most times he won't tell you what he's doing. It's like Abraham. Um, when, when the Lord said to Abram at that time, he said, go to a land that I will show you. And, um, and Abraham was probably like, what? Um, okay, where do you want me to go? He said, don't worry about where, just start moving. And sometimes, most times as human beings, we want to know where, when, what's happening. Uh, okay, if I do this, God, what will it produce? Is it worth it? And he said, all that in this season is none of your business. Your business is to take care of my business. And whatever I say goes. And that's how you'll get your miracle by obedience by divine obedience and not questioning every little thing that he tells you to do and by listening to your spirit and de and developing your spiritual muscles a lot of people develop physical muscles i know i started ever since i got diagnosed with diabetes I started lifting weights all the time. So I, I lift them about a couple times a week um, to strengthen my arm muscles and to uh, get some exercise and get the sugar moving. Um, I, I know when I started lifting weight, it hurt like the dickens. It really, it really caused me to struggle a lot. But now when I do it, it's a whole lot easier because I, I did it every day for a long time. And now that I'm lifting practically, I would say about three times a week um, or twice a week, at least I try, um, I can feel myself getting a little bit stronger. And I know that soon, He's going to be able to, um, I'm going to be able to, to get up to three pounds. 
I started with one pound and then moved up to two pounds and pretty soon I'll be able to get my three pound weights. Um, and that's what he's saying too. He's saying we want more of God's spirit. We want more of God's revelation, but we're not willing to lift the weight. We're not spiritually, we're not willing to read our Bible. We're not willing to uh, get down deep into the word. We're not willing to get into a rhythm with God when it, when it comes to uh, his, his word and what he says to do. And we want the blessings, but we don't want to lift any weight. It's like, I want muscles, God, but I don't want to do anything to get them. But come to church on a Sunday, I'm telling you, if I only lifted um, my weight um, once a week, I wouldn't be as I wouldn't be as strong physically as I am now. We cannot afford to only do it on Sunday or a little devotional here and there and whatever. Um, God is saying. If you want the blessing and the miracle that you've been praying for for years, if you want this to be your last, last cry, you have got to put in the work. And you, even sometimes when you put in the work, you won't see results right away. But he says, keep on working, keep on giving, keep on passing, fasting, keep on preaching, keep on plowing because he sees and he will reward you and um, it's just so amazing what he wants to do in this season but he wants our cooperation he's not gonna do it um, he said mostly he's not gonna do it miraculously he could but he said to me if I did it miraculously I would have a bunch of lazy children and he doesn't want a bunch of lazy children. He wants, he wants children that work. He wants children that uh, participate. Um, I don't have children myself. I do have two nephews, but that's different. But I don't think any, I don't think my sister and brother-in-law would appreciate uh, raising children that didn't do anything. Um, and, and God doesn't appreciate either, like, uh, children that don't do anything and expect things. A good parent wants their children to, to work so they can learn and grow. And if a natural parent is like that, what makes us think God is any different? God wants to do miraculous things, but he needs our participation. It's not only our generation that is uh, waiting for this. It's not only people that we know that are needing this glorious gospel. It's for the generations that we don't even know that. No, yet it's for the generations we don't even see and he's saying I need your par par participation not for for only yourself but for future generations and he's he's speaking to us today he needs you he wants you there are people that are broken people that are hurting people that you bump into every day, people that need to know the love of God. And it's not always, and it's almost never carrying your Bible over your head and, and preaching on the street. It's how you treat people at your job. It's how you are in the workplace. It's how you are with your, in, in your church Bible study. It's how, 
it's do you volunteer for things when it says volunteer and if you do volunteer do you show up or can people depend on you that all is ministry a lot of people think uh, just reading the Bible and praying and spending that with the Lord is how you grow your faith that is true but also it's your actions towards other people um, it's your action it's how you treat other people it's how you respect other people it's how you are with other people do you leave do you leave early when you're supposed to be at work are you on Facebook on your lunch hour when you when you know that you're not supposed to be on Facebook at work um, are you on YouTube when you're supposed to be uh, doing notes per meeting all this counts to God he is looking for people that he can trust he's looking for people that do what they say they're gonna do even when no one's watching and those are the people that he'll bless and if and if you and if you are not one of those people repent repent and say lord i'm sorry and ask him to teach you how to be one of those people and if you are one of those people he's got great things coming for you he sees your prayer he sees your fasting he sees your generosity towards people he sees all that and he will reward you not because you're doing it because to be seen of him or to do good works you're just doing good works because that's what he's called you to do good works don't oh don't don't give you favor with God um, he loves you regardless but they do give you favor with people and in turn God will use that to his favor Lord I pray that you'll teach us how to be more faithful citizens of the kingdom God I pray that you'll teach us where our actions don't line up with your word God teach us to be people of integrity where we lack integrity teach us Lord to have your motives God teach us how to just serve you and serve people to our to our best ability God and I praise you and I lift you up in the name of Jesus amen and amen I will see you guys later take care God bless bye